Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today this is going to be an exciting one because today we're going to talk about new paints specifically my new paints like like they have my name on them y you'll see uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. So recently, Ninjan and myself got to work with Jason over at Monument Hobbies on a new set of paints. Each of us had the task to create six paints that we thought uh, were interesting colors to add to the overall pro acryl range. So we took that away, we worked with Jason over several months, testing and refining these paints, and I'm happy to say that both these new paint lines uh, that here are both John's and myself's, uh, I'm really excited with what we've developed and, and what we've been able to uh, bring out uh, thanks to Monument. So thank you to Jason, I just want to say that right up front, and everyone at Monument Hobbies. It was awesome working with them. It's an awesome company. Uh, you know, you'll see me use their paints a lot in videos, so a chance to actually design my own paints and colors and get those on the table was really exciting. What we're going to do today is we're going to see these paints in action. Now, each of these paints has six different colors in the range, so let's head over to the desk and we'll take a look at what we've got and how we use them. All right, let's start by just looking at the colors. Obviously, the white blue isn't going to show up too well on white paper, but I thought I would just give you a straight up easy reference of what these colors look like, what all they are. This is all 12 sets. The first six are my colors. The second six are in John's set and just kind of spread them out here on a white piece of paper. Very clean, very clear. So you can just kind of see them in their true form and how bright they look over white. Now, as with all Pro Acryl paints, these are pretty matte when applied uh, and they uh, are, are usually uh, have a pretty decent opacity. The, the exception, of course, is something like the dark magenta, since that is made with the high quality magenta pigment, which is what we pushed for. Uh, then, you know, that is just a more naturally transparent pigment. And we didn't really want any other thickeners or stuff like that in there. We wanted it to be a true uh, magenta experience uh, with that pigment. Uh, next up, we'll go ahead and put them all out on the wet palette. Um, now, just a quick note about Pro Curl paints on the wet palette. I, I use them all the time on my wet palette. They work perfectly fine, but um, they are extremely hydrophilic paints. And so, you know, if you let them sit overnight or something, they will tend to over absorb water and kind of uh, not be very useful, um, especially if you have a very humid environment. Um, so it, most of the time your wet palette isn't really for leaving paints overnight or for multiple days It's to use a whole day of painting, but just a note about that 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 will happen um, But they work great with your wet palette as you're working over the course of the day They'll stay very usable uh, and, and retain all their great properties Now for this video, we're gonna see these paints in action and I thought what better figure than uh, uh, Horus ascended which is a fun new figure you're gonna see more about him in the weeks to come um, but we're going to start with just some black armor here. Now I'm working over pure black because he's mostly in black armor. Uh, and I'm going to work up and add some color to this black armor. And so the actual colors I'm using are up on the top. Um, but you can see that, you know, I'm going to have much less of an effect with these deeper, darker colors. Uh, one of the things I was most excited to get in this set was a good Payne's Gray. There aren't that many great Payne's Gray paints out there in the hobby range. Um, there are some things that are close, uh, but both the Dark Jade and the Payne's Gray for me were two essential colors because uh, Payne's Gray is just such an important part of almost every one of my workflows. Being a blue-black natural environmental shadow, it's just almost the perfect universal shadow color. And I use it almost all the time on so many miniatures. So to have one now in a hobby paint that I really love mixed how, you know, I like it mixed is really, really wonderful. And you can see how much that suddenly kicks when we add up that, that white blue into the dark jade and get such a more uh, high opacity to that. Uh, the white blue was another color for me that was just really essential in the line. Um, it's that cold highlight color. Uh, so this is something that if you're trying to go for... Uh, a final highlight that's that's a little more pushed in the in the cold spectrum. This is it. 
You might wonder, do these colors airbrush? Well, the answer is yes, they do. Uh, so here, after I had created all my sort of edge highlights where the, the armor's reflecting, I wanted to knock it back just a little. I sort of over-highlighted to get my, my colors and lights in place. And then I'm gonna come back in with my, uh, with some thin down Payne's Gray. Uh, so this is very thin. This is pushed about uh, 10 drops of thinner to one drop of paint. And we're just gonna slowly, um, with my Harder and Steinbeck Infinity, uh, just go ahead and work uh, these uh, down and, and smooth out the shadows. One of the keys to black armor is you, especially something like this, you really want it to pop and have these reflection points of visual interest, but you want at least 50% of the surface to still be basically a true black. But mixing in a little bit of that blue on there will just make the color more interesting. Now that was more of a glaze, but of course we can use it for traditional layer application through the airbrush as well. Um, here using that dark plum that's in John set. Uh, wonderful base color for skin, for purples, for reds, um, for a lot of different things when you're trying to add uh, some real warmth to it. Uh, and then we're going to put down a little base coat on the fur, just kind of get that toned up. Now none of the fur will actually be brown, but I wanted a warm undertone uh, to the fur. Uh, so we're just really hitting it with some heavy, uh, basically some heavy overbrushing of this warm brown uh, just to get a, a tone in place that'll let me work the other layers up over top of it. My goal here is really to just show you all of the colors in action, how they dry, how they cover, stuff like that, more than how to paint Horus. Um, but my next goal is then start getting to integrate the red-gray. Um, I really love red-gray and John's uh, color set. This is one of the ones that I wanted to see in the range too, so I was happy to see it included. Um, I think red gray, this sort of warm gray tone is something missing from uh, many paint ranges, but it's just a very, very useful paint uh, because you want that, that warm color infused gray tone. Never use just regular white plus black mid-tone grays if you can avoid it for most purposes. Uh, a mid-tone gray with a color infused into it, a green, a red, a brown, something like that, is just going to be much more visually interesting. And so now I'm just working up the fur through patches. Uh, if you're curious about fur painting in, in more detail and why I'm painting it like I am instead of traditional sort of dry brushing, um, this is to get a more realistic fur effect to make it look patchy because it's a dead animal. Uh, sitting on his back. It's not a live thing. Uh, I have a, a video about how to paint fur where I explain this technique in detail of, of the, the patchwork method of fur painting. Um, but now we've worked our way all the way up into dark ivory. Um, yet another color that uh, this again, this is from John's set. We're really kind of exploring his set on the dead animal sitting on the back of Horus here um, because uh, the dark ivory is a really nice final highlight color for a lot of purposes. If you're when going to pure white is often sort of incorrect. It's just too bright for most surfaces. Things like cloth and furs and sort of natural matte organic substances really don't go all the way to true white. So something like a dark ivory will seem very bright and very near white uh, when it's applied. But of course, it's a much softer tone. Um, we're going to go ahead and then... Uh, just glaze in some shadows over the top of that, uh, the, all the layers we put up there just to create the natural environmental shadows in the same tones we did with the armor itself. So that's just this very thin airbrush glaze of Payne's Gray yet again. Here, well, one more time, we're, we're thinned down like 10 to 1. Royal Purple. This is one of the colors in my set I am most excited about. Uh, this is some wake up and slap you in the face purple. Uh, royal purple is something I really, really, really push to have this color in my set and to have it be as true and strong as it is. I wanted a regal, you know, just unbelievably bright purple. Um, here I work it up over the plum, so it's not as bright as it can be, but you'll see kind of how it looks at the end when I, when I start to integrate some other colors. Um, but this purple, especially when you integrate in or put it over a bright white color, it's really going to give you just an unbelievably intense purple. Um, perfect for sort of, you know, th those royal colored robes and, and stuff like that. So, uh, couldn't recommend it enough. Uh, the dark yellow green, especially when mixed with normal flesh tones, is wonderful for rotting or dead flesh. Fortunately, Horus has, he has like faces and skulls 
taped all over him. I'm not sure how we think he's the good guy. You know, you probably shouldn't have that many dead people's heads hanging from your belt if you're the, the good guy. I mean, I understand he's not the good guy. He's definitely the bad guy, but he sees himself as the good guy, I suppose. Um, although, you know, when you're working for a group called the Ruinous Powers and then you staple dead people to your, your belt, I start to question that. Um, we're back to the Dark Plum here just because I wanted to show it as an undercoat for flesh as well. It just works really well as a first layer for flesh, setting a nice warm base tone for Caucasian flesh or, or African American flesh or anything like that, uh, really being those deepest, deepest shadows. Uh, then I just start working up the flesh tones. Here we have pure beige red, and this to me, again, is one of my uh, sort of favorite colors uh, that you can get that wasn't previously available in Pro Curls range, but I really like it. It creates a nice, soft, uh, you know, sort of pinkish undertone for your skin. And then when you lay something like the warm flesh into it from John set, you really just get such a wonderful naturalistic flesh tone because you have this combination of the warm yellows of the upper tone along with it then being undertoned by this sort of pinky red. Uh, so it really just creates a, a, a really great sequencing for sort of traditional Caucasian flesh. Um, and you can see I'm just working the, the, the skin up here. Uh, and then the final thing we're going to do here is integrate in some of that white ivory, uh, or sorry, dark ivory, I apologize, um, into the warm flesh to get our, our final highlights. So all in all, you can see that's pretty much running through the set. The only, you know, all of the colors, the only thing I didn't really have a chance to show in action was the dark yellow green, but I really do love it, especially if you like military camo, stuff like that. Um, here we'll show the dark magenta. I'm using that to tone his skin, his cheeks, around his eyes, and then what will eventually be the red glow on that side of his face from in his power armor. Uh, the dark magenta is really wonderfully transparent for these kind of glazes and these sorts of purposes of adding that red tone to skin or just doing a really intense, bright, saturated magenta. So that's the paint range. Uh, I, I, I hope you enjoyed this little run through on it with Horace. Um, you'll see some more of him in some coming videos, but uh, this was a lot of fun. There you go. I hope this gave you a good overview of how the paints work. Now, you might have noticed throughout this video, I was painting one Horus Ascended, a pretty awesome model. Uh, however, he's not done yet. Uh, surprisingly, he's a rather complicated and big figure. But if you come back next week, we're going to continue painting him, and I'm going to show you a little more detail. We're going to talk about more of Horus and how to get him on the table. But as always, thank you so much for watching this. Give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. You can find the link to the new paints down below. Uh, so please check those out. Uh, really excited to be bringing these out. And I think you're going to really love the colors. I know I do. If you want to support the channel, not only can you click that link, but there's also, of course, a Patreon focused on helping you take your next step on your hobby journey. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.